we're here now in the Faras section of the National Museum of Warsaw and you can see behind me a lot of um, religious imagery from uh, one of the major collections here at the museum and I'm we're here with Anna Knapek who's going to explain a little bit more about these individual works. Hello. Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, what we have here is something completely unique. It is uh, uh, in, uh, there are only two places in the world where you can uh, admire early Christian Nubian art. Uh, it is our museum, National Museum in Warsaw, and the other museum is uh, National Museum in Sudan, uh, uh, in Khartoum, uh, exactly, uh, where the uh, beautiful paint, wall paintings from Faras are displayed. Faras, uh, it was actually a very small village situated in very northern Sudan, about 300 meters from the Egyptian border, so it was very, very close to the, to the Egyptian border, uh, where Polish archaeologists uh, started excavation in uh, 1960. One. Uh, the reason was uh, that uh, in the late 1950s, the uh, Egyptian government decided to build a high dam on, uh, on the Nile River, uh, and uh, so it was known that uh, till 1972, a huge area of, uh, of the ancient Nubia, it is a geographical region at the border of uh, Egypt and, uh, and Sudan, will be flooded under waters of uh, artificial lake. That's why UNESCO asked uh, archaeologists from all over the world to come to Nubia and to help to help save those ancient ancient monuments. In the English language world, we have uh, the experience of the Elgin marbles in the in London, mm -hmm. which have been uh, long been a very uh, controversial piece. Is anything similar going on here? Uh, no, no uh, not at all, because uh, this was um, uh, this uh, international UNESCO campaign called uh, Nubian campaign uh, was uh, organized uh, like this. Uh, it was said that each archaeological archaeological mission, which will come to Sudan and help uh, excavate all those uh, beautiful monuments and uh, archaeological uh, ex uh, archaeological sites uh, will be allowed to take 50% of findings from the uh, from the excavation so uh, after the excavation uh, in Faras finished uh, Polish and uh, Sudanese authorities met and they divided the uh, findings they divided uh, everything uh, into two uh, parts. I am told that one particular important element of this exhibition is the Saint Anne picture right here next to us. Why is this one of the most important pieces? I think it's the most unique one. Uh, on the Faras uh, Cathedral walls we could find lots of saints, angels, so we uh, can also find some uh, stories from the from the Bible, known from the from the Bible, uh, but Saint Anna is, is unique. We uh, don't, uh, her story is not known from the Bible, we know it only from the Apocrypha. Uh, Saint Anna was uh, Mary's mother, so she was uh, Christ's uh, grandmother actually, and uh, we know only uh, Till now, we know only about two or three uh, images showing Saint Anna, so it is something peculiar uh, to see uh, this uh, woman depicted on uh, on the painting. And now we're now in the Mateko room of the National Museum in Warsaw. Recently we have celebrated a, a huge anniversary of the Grunwald battle. And whenever Poles think of the Battle of Grunwald, they think of this beautiful painting here behind us by Mateko. And we're in fact in the Jan Mateko room of the National Museum. What can you tell us about this painting? It is. It has an amazing story. First, uh, first of all, as you as you said, uh, when we uh, when a Polish student, grown up, adult or senior, he uh, is thinking about the Battle of Grunwald, the first thing he sees uh, is this uh, is this painting. Mateko painted in the, in the 19th century, so it was about uh, 400 uh, years after the battle actually, uh, and he painted it uh, in a quite difficult moment of our history. Uh, it was the time when Poland uh, was. Uh, 
uh, under the rules of three different, uh, mm -hmm. three other different countries. So uh, we were we were not an independent nation. We uh, and by painting this uh, this uh, picture, Mateko wanted to remain as our great story because it was uh, the one of the most uh, significant, uh, significant and uh, one of the. Uh, biggest uh, Polish military victories. Why has the importance of this painting survived for so long? I think uh, that's uh, because of the history, that's uh, because of the importance of the of the battle and also uh, because of the painting's history. It's um, uh, during the Second World War, it was the painting uh, most wanted by the Nazis. They, uh, the painting uh, itself was actually hidden at the uh, very beginning of the of the war. It was hidden uh, in Lublin, this is a city about 200 kilometers from, from Warsaw. Uh, it was hidden underground for over three and a half years and uh, it was the time where, when Nazis were still Nazis were still looking for the for the painting they even uh, were um, they even proposed a reward to to a person who uh, only tell where the painting is hidden first uh, it, it was 2 million marks then they increased the price to 10 million marks but uh, no one uh, told them where the painting was was hidden it's very hard to hide such a painting because it is a huge painting. How big? How big is it, in fact? Uh, it measures uh, nine, uh, a little bit over nine uh, and a half meter in width, and uh, uh, about four and a half meter in height. So it's uh, 42 square meters of uh, surface. And as you notice, it's uh, quite difficult to hide, hide uh, such a picture. But uh, it's painted on canvas, so we can roll it as a carpet, actually. And it, this is what happened with the with the painting. It was rolled uh, hidden in a in a co uh, in kind of uh, coffin and uh, 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 and buried underground yes exactly. we can see two major elements there's a man dressed in white and a man dressed in red who are these people uh, one of them, the man uh, wearing uh, white clothes, uh, is uh, the Grand Master of uh, Teutonic Knights. Uh, his name was Ulrich von Jungingen. Uh, he is about to die. He will, he will die in actually in a, in a few minutes, maybe uh, maybe sooner. Uh, he will be killed by two regular Lithuanian or Polish soldiers. So his death isn't a, a death of uh, of a knight, actually. Mm -hmm. he, he, uh, and the other person, uh, you, uh, you asked me about uh, is the Grand Duke of Lithuania. Uh, he was a uh, brother of uh Polish, uh, Polish king, uh, because the the battle actually itself uh, was uh, uh, on the one side it was uh, a Polish and Lithuanian army against the Teutonic uh, uh, Knights, Teutonic Teutonic Order, and here the Grand Duke of Lithuania uh, uh, is uh, keeping his hands up in the in the air like in a gesture of victory. So uh, that's uh, this uh, two. Uh, person showed on the picture actually tell us that is the, uh, the end of the battle. The Teutonic Knights will, uh, uh, the, the Grand Master will die in a few seconds uh, and will be defeated. Uh, so we can, uh, we can say that, uh, that we, we won, we can be uh, happy of this uh, because of this victory. And we are happy standing behind this beautiful painting. And let's move on to another section of the museum. And we're standing now in front of a painting which has been here some three years because it was recently returned to the museum after being lost, presumed lost, since the Second World War. This is Alexander Geremski, Jewish woman selling oranges. And it, it is one, one of the more famous paintings for the very reason that it was returned to the museum following um, an operation by the various, various authorities for many, many years. What can you tell me about this painting? Uh, this painting uh, is one of the most uh 
most beautiful in our collection. Uh, it's my personal opinion, but I think uh, many people will actually agree with with me. Uh, it's uh, we can see here an elderly Jewish woman. She's probably in her 70s, maybe in her 80s, and she's uh, trying to sell some oranges. Uh, she is shown on the background of uh, Warsaw uh, of uh, Warsaw of the 19th century because Alexander Gierimski painted the, uh, this uh, uh, this. Uh, work of, uh, of art uh, in 1881 and uh, after he finished he actually gave it to his very good uh, friend uh, to uh, to a friend who support, supported him for many uh, many years and uh, after uh, after his death the painting uh, was in uh, his uh, daughter's uh, collection and uh, finally in 1920s it was uh, sold uh, on auction and uh, uh, it was museum national museum in warsaw who bought the painting to our collection. In 1939 uh, it was uh, hidden, uh, um, but uh, s uh, some uh, during, the, uh, during the war, probably in 1940-44, after the fall of uh, Warsaw Rising, uh, it was s stolen from, from our, our collection and we've been looking for this uh, painting for over 60 years. Uh, we, uh, I, I think we didn't expect that uh, one day we will see the uh, uh, Jewish lady uh, selling oranges once again. But it happened. So um, the Ministry of, uh, of Culture, the Foreign Ministry, is always, is always looking out for these paintings because there's a whole list of paintings which are still lost and are still out there somewhere waiting to come back on these very walls. How many paintings are still, are still out there and what, is, what are these ministries doing to bring these paintings back? Uh, it's. Uh, I don't know the exact number. I know uh, in the whole Poland. I know that uh, we uh, during the Second World War we lost about 10 percent of our collection, and we are of course still looking uh, for those uh, objects. These are not only the paintings, but also uh, crafts and uh, sculpture and uh, other works of uh, of art. Uh, our Ministry of uh, National Heritage, uh, Ministry of Culture and National Heritage, has a separate department so as uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to look for the uh, for this looted uh, art but uh, and what they, they do they uh, they have contacts they uh, they are uh, they are watching what's uh, what's showing on the auctions. Uh, they uh, they do. Uh, I think we don't know about many uh, many things they, they do to find uh, actually the, the objects. But when they will find one, or when they will receive a signal that something might be uh, our war lost, uh, they do everything to bring the painting or the, the other work of art uh, to back to to Poland, and they uh, they succeed uh, in. In many uh, many uh, cases, so we during past uh, few years, uh, to only to our museum, about 10, 12 uh, paintings uh, came came back. And let's hope many more paintings come to this museum.